in order to further uh, explain the idea of the perturbation theory, um, let's uh, discuss the features which are at work while uh, taking up this uh, uh, vocal tract as a tube, right, as an organ tube, and then how it is working uh, for the, you know, uh, for the production of speech sound, and how the shape of the tube is influencing the production of various speech sound, right? So if there is the reduction near the closure, right, then that reduction would uh, ultimately affect the size of the tube, right? Uh, because this, uh, you know, when it is a closure there, and that closure is um, reducing the, the sound, for example, when there is the closure of the air passage, right? So that air passage is influencing the size of the tube. So that's an important concept in the perturbation theory. And uh, similarly, the shortening will increase the values of the uh, formants, right? So uh, since the, uh, the connection is, uh, you know, opposite, when the size of the tube is shorter, there are, there are higher values of the frequencies, right? And when it is longer, then there are the, you know, the shorter values of the smaller values of the frequencies, right? So when it is shortened, then ultimately what happens is that the values of the formants are increased, right? So that's an important uh, concept about the perturbation of the uh, tube or the uh, shape of the tube, right? Like when, uh, again, when the shortening is done at the, uh, or it is uh, being narrowed by the speaker or uh, by the process of the production of speech sound, uh, at a position where, which is close to the point of the uh, maximum uh, pressure position, okay, where the uh, pressure is uh, maximum, and that's technically called the pressure maxima, right? So when it is there, then a standing wave pattern uh, for a given formant would increase its value, right? Because the, the value would be increased, right? So that's uh, the point. And then when, it is, when the tube uh, shape is uh, changed, then of course the frequency response uh, would be uh, different. And various parts of the tube, they are you know, uh, sensitive towards velocity and pressure, right? And the tube shape, that basically dictates the frequency response curve, right? the fre uh, frequency response curve, like there are frequencies. And you can just uh, think about this possibility of the uh, frequency response curve, right? Like when you are to, to uh, produce a sound, like a shua sound, and you are tapping, right? You are tapping at your, this lower part of your uh, jaw, right, here. And you can feel about the uh, F1, for example, the F1 of the sound, right? Like E, E, E. So you can just think about that position, that place, that how is the first formant of the frequency uh, being, you know, uh, felt by you or like um, any speaker, right? And this concept is that when the waves are uh, traveling, then there are nodes and there are anti nodes, right? And that's why there are positions which are uh, specifically uh, based on something like velocity and pressure. So that's the concept. And now let me give you uh, a figure. Uh, where you can have the, uh, the idea of the, this, uh, you know, velocity maxima position and the pressure uh, maxima position, and then how uh, various formants are, you know, uh, created and produced from those positions, right? So that's the concept behind the uh, perturbation theory. So this is uh, actually the concept of the tube here, when the, this is the closed end, right? And it's the pressure which is maximum here, right? And then it's the open end at lips where the velocity is maximum here, right? And the F1 is like in this shape, right? And then you can talk about the F2 in this manner also. Like there is, uh, you know, when the second formant is traveling, right? So the pressure is here and then the velocity is like uh, here, right? And then similarly it goes on, right? So that's the, you know, the concept which is, uh, you know, uh, continued in for the another frequency that's uh, the formant frequency 3, F3, and you can just think about the same pattern which is followed here, right? So it's something like that, right? And ultimately, we can have those uh, frequency resonances, and that is the shift of the energy, the periodical shift of the energy, which is basically the resonance, and that resonance gives us this, uh, you know, division of uh, the positions for 
pressure maxima and velocity maxima in the standing waves of the first three vowel formants. That's an important idea about the, the perturbation theory of speech production.